Welcome back to Volumes, and in this episode I spoke with Calm Nemo on his experience in being part of the Scottish Youth Parliament. This episode really filled politics and the current uh, state of affairs in the UK, so if you're not really into that then I don't really recommend this episode, but in general it's very interesting, it's very relevant, and yeah, thanks for watching. So yeah, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, so my name's Callum Nemo. Uh, I am heavily into politics. I have been since... 2017, um, maybe just a wee bit couple before that, I wasn't like hugely into it, but ever since mainly the EU referendum and with everything that's went on for the past three years, it's been a long three years, uh, I've been worshipping politics more and more religiously as every day goes by, probably to the spies of some of my friends that <laughs> don't uh, really care for politics or that do care and they've now just grown a sense of discontent towards the system <laughs> and now they just don't seem interested at all. Yeah, so we definitely live in quite a like a political confusion right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, well that's that's putting it lightly, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so what what is it that specifically made you want to get involved in all? Uh, well, when the EU referendum came out, uh, when the result came out, we were obviously leave won. No one was expecting leave to win. It was meant to be a remain victory, a comfortable victory. Well, maybe not comfortable, but, you know, a remain victory. All the political parties for once in their life all agreed that one thing was uh, certain, and that is to remain in the European Union. Uh, at that time, I was away with a different political party, although I'm not very proud to admit that, but I wasn't a member. I was obviously I wasn't old enough to vote because you had to be 18 but in mm -hmm. Scottish elections I voted and I used to vote for the SNP I did once and now I am a conservative right. I always probably will be unless they chuck me out for being too much of a Europhile and so um I feel like living as a youth in Scotland it's it's kind of strange to hear you saying that you're a conservative where it feels like a majority of conservatives are from an older generation and have older ideologies. So what is it specifically about conservative that resonates with you? Well, to bring up the point of like young people, uh, young, you have to understand that, that every party has their own stereotypes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, our stereotypes towards the Labour Party is it's full of Marxist commies that want everything run by the state, when it's not really the case. Right. That's yeah, just yeah. something that sells yeah. things in the newspapers and sells... To the general public yeah. to consume so the the idea of conservatives being old white men and it's all just uh old-fashioned thatcherite politics there is certain mm -hmm. people there there are probably thatcherites now that are still mps maybe we have some in power i i wouldn't possibly comment on that but um no there's a lot of young people especially that i'm friends with the friends group that i'm in they're all young they're all between the age of my age 20 and 30 they have their own unique ideas of what a conservative means. Uh, and uh, uh, that to me just represents the broad one nation conservatives as we like to call it because we're all under this one banner but we right. all think differently. Right, okay. Um, so you said you're initially you, you supported more so SNP mm -hmm. and now you're more conservative. What made that switch? Well, for once, uh, obviously the Scottish independence was a big factor of why I was an SNP supporter originally. Uh, originally, I thought that Scotland was better off separate. And the reason that I was is that because I understand from a very early age that Scotland and England were two completely different cultures. They were two completely different groups of people, if you will. Um, and I just didn't think Scotland's views were represented. So I said, well, why, why, as our far views aren't represented down in England, it's better off up in Scotland. Um, but then once I started reading more, after, especially after the EU referendum, I kind of went from this sort of, that person to the person that I am now. I started reading more, I started, I made a rule for myself that I would always read things for different different perspectives. Yeah, absolutely. I would not just read the Gar Guardian wholesomely, and I wouldn't just yeah. read the Sun wholesomely. Yeah. I typically don't. I'm not a big fan of any uh, media. I I don't worship anything. If I had to say my preference of what I would like, I would like the Independent, uh, the Economist, Financial Times. I tend them to be 
they can sometimes be like a right-sided newspaper and they can sometimes be a left-sided newspaper. That's what yeah. I like. And I think that is exa- exactly what politics should be. As right. you should be seeing, well, why, why does Jeremy Corbyn supporters think the way they do? Why, yeah. why are they thinking like that? Why does Boris Johnson supporters think the way they do? Why, why are they thinking that? I want to know this so then I can take both sides equally and as non-biased as possible and then make my own decisions on how I want things to be done or how I see things to be done and my thinking now is is it has to be done and I, I've always branded myself as a liberal conservative uh, to give a, a rough idea in case a liberal conservative doesn't mean anything it kind of means that you still on a very very basic term you still think that capitalism is the system that it needs to be right. you believe that the economy shouldn't be influenced by government and leave that to the businesses to fight each other let okay. them grow the economy for you but at the same time, you understand that you know people can't really be trusted to do that. So you legislate them in a nice, friendly right, way. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it's not just ending there. If you look at like the social spectre, I believe in the EU. I'm a huge, huge fan of the European Union. I'm a Europhile. Some would probably say, well, what are you doing in the Conservative Party then when mm-hmm. everything's going on? You know, I believe in the open border policy. You know, if people want to work in Germany from Britain, then they can freely do that. There shouldn't be any border. And mm-hmm. there, at the end of the day, the way I see land is, it's just a land that has been formed through millions and millions of years. Yeah. What is people got to be, obviously there is something to be proud of. You know, you, a little human, has managed to do so much on that little island, so you can be proud of that. But I don't see why you need to... Uh, why there stop. needs to be sort of like yeah, defensive why, yeah, why you need to be defensive but I understand obviously that there's criminals trying to come in terrorists yeah, trying to yeah. come in then absolutely you need to deal with them either through a military force or you need to deal with them through whatever means necessary yeah. to stop these people coming in if they've got like a malicious intent but you know you're, you're, we're talking now of a points based system Yeah, you're pointing people on the pros and cons to allow people in that's not really and fair. and that doesn't even necessarily mean that just because criminals can't get into the country doesn't mean that we're creating our own criminals. Mm, yeah, exactly. We're creating our own criminals, yeah. and we're not considering deporting them or anything yeah. like that. You know, we've got our own problems here. With that sort of same ideology, we should stop allowing people to be born in the UK because we might have a criminal. Well, well, I, stop being in the born in the UK is a bit too far. But exactly. Uh, that, yeah. My. Uh, point I'm trying to put across is, is, you know, we've got our own problems here, we've got our own criminals here. Yeah. These people over here might not necessarily be criminals now uh, when they want to come over, mm-hmm. but they might do a criminal act. Now, yeah. if they are don't want to do a criminal act over here through a terrorist offence or, you know, cause harm to thousands or hundreds of people, yeah, more yeah. Like, then absolutely we don't let them come in. But if they, let's say, do a petty crime, let's say that they rob a loaf of bread, then we need to look at that and say, well, why did they rob the loaf of bread? Why why did they rob the shopkeeper? Is yeah. it to feed their family? If they're not able to afford to feed their family, what are we doing wrong as a nation? Yeah. To force so, someone yeah. to do that. I suppose, yeah, the, the full point here is it's so complicated to mm. really, like, set this black and white rule where we need to, like, set out a thousand black and white rules to mm. make it more clear from the get-go. Um, yeah, I can totally agree with what you're saying, yeah. Um, so what is the sort of like uh, fundamental points of uh, conservative, the conservative party that that means something to you? And then what are some things that you can really just disagree with completely? Well, to, uh, the disagreeing bit is quite <laughs> simple. Uh, that is leaving the European Union. Right, okay. Uh, we're obviously now in a general election cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the third general election, I think, in four years. So we've asked the people three times within a short period of time the general election cycle is normally every five years. Mm-hmm. So this is a very, very short period of time. We've asked them three times to vote for a political party. It's quite exciting. <laughs> but we're too afraid to ask them really what's causing the general election and another referendum, and that is membership in the European Union. To right. me, if we're going to go back to the people, it needs to come back as a, a second referendum. I've always been a fan of a second referendum. And, you know, the Conservative Party, will, the Leavers and the Conservative Party will always say, oh, you're a Mainer, of course you'll say that. No. Because the Leave Party was being investigated for lying to the people. Yeah. They lied to them on a huge, huge scale. Uh, what was it? Did you watch um, in BBC Radio 4 the Little Britain spin off? No, Britain? I, I no didn't you didn't. That. Right. So, a very good point there was made where, you know, 17.4 million people 
voted to leave and then 17.4 million people googled what is the European Union <laughs> so you know I, I, I agree with it because I think until the European Union not a lot of British people knew exactly what it did and that's what the leave campaign done very very well is the EU is the European Union okay everyone knew we were in it but no one really I, I didn't certainly know yeah. really what until, until you start googling it and then yeah. when you start googling it you find out that the European Union's given consumers rights over businesses quite mm. uh, good rights. It's bringing in things like GDPR. Yep. It's bringing in, you know, an open door policy, the biggest free market in the world. Small towns in Wales, Scotland, England that previously wouldn't have got a lot of funding from our own governments getting funding off the European Union. They're doing so many good things for us. Sure, they have their negatives. Every government has their negatives, but they're doing more positives. And that's that's why I want this to come back. And if people still want to go leave, fine. I'll accept it. Uh, I've obviously I've accepted the first one. I, I would back Theresa May's deal. Boris Johnson's deal is a bit. Oh, I won't comment on Boris Johnson's deal. Qu- questionable. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to be careful what I say with Boris Johnson's deal because uh, it's it's a bit of a mess and it's a bit of good things and bad things. It's a bit of. A I mean, there's all you can always find the good in something. Yeah, and you can yeah. always find the bad in something. It's more so how much bad is there and how much good is mm, there really? Yeah. And then you weigh up what is yeah uh, your view on it out of those. Yeah, exactly. So going back to you saying that you uh, supported SNP initially, did you uh, believe in like a, a independent Scotland? I did. Uh, now I don't. Uh, again, back to the point I made, I did a lot of reading myself. I did a lot of fact checking. And now we're seeing that... Do you know what JERS is? No. Right. So the JERS is the... Oh, what does it stand for? Growth... It's, it's basically the economic report of Scotland for the right, year. Okay, right, okay. Right. And... During the first, I say the first referendum, I hope it's the only one that we'll have in a long, long time, (laughs) Uh, but in the Scottish independence referendum, SNP had this huge, huge thing that JERS were showing that Scotland was this really good economy, it was doing really, really well, and under an independent Scotland it could do even better, and we kind of couldn't really argue it. Now what JERS is showing is, is there's a deficit of 7%, which means that if we were to become independent we would have that seven percent gap to do right. to deal with now the smp's big targeting point this year is well when they're talking about indirect two is we want to join the european union again the european union won't allow us because i think they have a rule one of the first rules is you need to have a three percent deficit ratio right okay so we would need to cut our deficit by four percent now that would cause uh austerity in Scotland, the SNP would be responsible for austerity. It would either cause huge tax increases, and when you have a border like England that's running the same way as Scotland, businesses are just going to go down there. Mm-hmm. Businesses are going to put their headquarters down there, and then they're going to lose out in tax money altogether. Yeah. So then you need to cut the services anyway. Uh, we've got that argument. We've got the UK dividend. Now, what is the UK dividend? I think it, I would like to say it is... Do you know? I can't remember the exact statistic, but there's basically this dividend that says that the United Kingdom pays X amount of money every year for Scotland to make up for its losses. So without the UK, I think it, I think it's two thousand. It might be more. It might be less. I'm going to go in the middle. Part of me wants to say four thousand. Part of me wants to say one thousand. So I'm going to go in the middle. So then, if I'm wrong, it's not right. overinflated yeah. too much or it's underinflated. Uh, but that UK dividend basically pays for what Scotland can't make up. So right. if you left the United Kingdom, you're having to tell families they need to find that amount of money out of their pockets. They're not going to. Not Especially the poorest people in this country. They can't yeah. afford to find that. They can't afford that already. So could you imagine what it would be like if you've got there? Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like a lose, lose, lose situation, really. Yeah, and that's why I've changed my mind. Right. Uh, I'm brave enough to say that I did change my mind. I was for independence when I was much, much younger. And now I am completely against it and I will always most likely be against it right um so you you don't agree with like a a new uh, like possibility of making scotland independent now that the the rest of britain has broken away from europe no because again as i said europe might not even let us back in yeah when the independence referendum came out the the, what was it the governor uh, it was someone in the European Union quite high up I would like to say the governor said that he wouldn't let us in anyway right because you know they don't let Turkey in so if they're still letting Turkey in it'll take a while if that and they don't see us for many different reasons Uh, so there's not a chance it might not get in the European Union so if we're then without the UK and the European Union how are we going to survive 
Yeah. If we, you're arguing that we can't survive outside the Union, which is what I'm arguing, how can we possibly survive outside the European Union? That's my, my sort of take on it, anyway. V- super fascinating, honestly. Um, so... Uh, do you want to jump over to the uh, Scottish Youth Parliament and talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so anything that I've said there isn't obviously related yeah. to the Scottish Youth Parliament. Completely forget Completely everything Completely forget everything heard. now that we're on to this sort of yeah. subject because uh, the Scottish Youth Parliament is politically impartial and yeah. always will be. Uh, I'm not here as a member of the Scottish Youth Parliament. I can talk about it, yeah. but I'm not here representing that. No. That's not my job today. Yeah. My job you're is to you're here representing it. yourself yeah, and you're represent, speaking about yeah, exactly. everything So there you go, now the disclaimer's gone, we can yeah. go and talk about the um, Youth Parliament. So, again, talking a bit about yourself, what made you want to join that and get involved in it and get elected and so on? Well, as I said, I think at the right at the start that I didn't always be this sort of religious political person mm. that worship politics like it's... I, 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 well, that's what a religious uh, worship does, but... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I wasn't political in any way. And now that I've seen the EU mm-hmm. referendum and I've seen, you know, people just, young people in particular, not going out and voting, We, could, if young people went out and voted, we could have remained. There's mass majority of young people want to remain in the European Union. It's the stats show that the older you get, the more likely you are to want to leave the European Union and the younger you are, the more likely you are to remain in the European Union. So I'm, I basically wanted to join up to say that, look, politics can be interesting. Politics can change the way we see things. You mm-hmm. know, if, if young people went out in more numbers and voted the way they wanted to, most likely, according to the statistics, not all of them, but the vast majority of them would have voted. We might have been remaining in the European Union, Brexit might have just been something that, oh, what if it happened uh, kind of story. So that's one of the main reasons I wanted to get into the youth parliament is to try and get this young generation that involved and interested involved and interested because yeah. it, it change it honestly it changes countries it changes the demographics of politics you know you look at what Brexit has done is Brexit has turned British politics into it's this sort of political game of yeah. ping pong yeah you know and could you imagine what would happen if that never happened you know that was a big political thing and that was caused by people going out and vote so imagine what a young person or indeed anyone can go if they just go out and vote yeah regardless who you vote for you know uh you said earlier on that you you yourself didn't really feel affiliated to any party but if there was a party that was that you could go out and vote for it. The Moderns, yeah. the Looney Party, the Greens, the Conservatives, <laughs> yeah. Labour. There are loads of different parties. You can even stand as an independent. Maybe. The, the best independent in Clydesdale. And you could say that Clydesdale is going to be the best place to live and your views would be represented by at least someone. You could go and vote for them if you wanted. Honestly, politics is so wide and it's so accepting to everyone that yeah. really people can go out and vote for whoever they want. So what is it you've kind of like done to make the youth more involved and interested? Well, uh, uh, the big part the problem that I have is obviously my majority of my youth that I represent are in high schools. So in order to go to speak to them, I need to go into the high schools. And right. so far the high schools have been okay. They've been trying to work with me. Uh, it's just trying to get those dates in, you know, because high schools right now are going through prelims. Uh, in a couple of months' time yeah. they're going through exams, so they don't really want to see this sort of politics person coming in and talking politics, trying... Yeah. you know confuse, confuse them, kids yeah. or you know hype them up and f- distract them from somewhere else so it's, it's all about that working so that's how I mainly work with the youth uh, but in terms of like what I'm actually doing for the youth I worked recently with the Carlock Development Trust whose job it is is to you know look at Carlock over the years and develop it as a town so I put forward like my pitches on it I wanted to see more green space in Carlock mm-hmm. I'm a big environmentalist I uh, Climate breakdown is so important, and it's up to every single town, village, city to do their bit. Do their bit. So mm. I was talking about more green space. I was talking about you know we need to also help our businesses in the high streets. Too many times, Kaluk has Chinese chippies, hairdressers, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. It has the odd occasional store there. So I'm trying to you know say, well, why don't we make sure that our youth centres are up to scratch? Do they have everything that they need? What about um, there was an idea pitch for about a youth cafe. You know, it's a cafe that young people can go in, they can socialise, they can have, like, cheap drinks, cheap stuff that young people like, and they can go in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I worked with the Transport Discussion Day for Scotland, so their plan was to develop Scotland's transport network uh, over the next 20 to 30 years. And they asked me to, his 
in behalf of all the constituents what they would like to see. So again, with the environment thing, I wanted to yeah. see more green buses, uh, so electric hybrid buses. I wanted to see more public transport in general. Yeah. You know, Edinburgh has a good tram system. Why can't Glasgow have a good tram system? Why can't Aberdeen have a good tram system? Uh, we're talking about, you know, trying to subsidise cars for people. Uh, subsidising cars for people means that they can go and get electric cars, can go get ah, hybrid right, cars yeah. so that it's cheaper for them. Uh-huh. People love cheap, cheap things. So if the government can go and, you know, make that thing cheaper for them, they will go out and buy it. That yeah. is, because people want to solve the climate. They will help in whatever way they can. But if, they, is, if it's accessible. Yeah, if it's if accessible. Can, if that yeah. isn't accessible, they can't do it. Yeah. It's up to the government and indeed people that I've worked with to make sure that it is accessible because people will go and do it. That is the beauty and uh, the inspirational thing about human beings is people will go and unite behind something that's yeah. going to affect everyone and they will go and do it. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. So speaking about people uniting and and in regards to global warming and climate change, what are your opinions on what happened uh, three weeks ago in London um, with the massive uh, protests? Yeah, Extinction Rebellion. So I know a couple of people that are members of Extinction Rebellion. I'm sure you do as well. Uh, I personally have mixed feelings on Extinction Rebellion and this is the old... As do I. uh, This is the old conservative and me... They, I like Extinction Rebellion because they're going out for a good cause. Mm. They're going out and saying, look, there's a climate cl- uh, breakdown coming in. We need to do something. We're focusing on Brexit. Okay, it's an important issue, but this is going to be an even bigger issue if we don't solve it. The longer and longer the way, more dither and delay, to quote Boris Johnson, just to have a little uh, thing there, is this is going to get worse if we keep delaying it. And I admire that. Mm-hmm. I admire that people from all across the country went down there and yeah. showed that. But what I don't admire is the way that they were trying to do it. I believe there's better ways in doing it. I believe that their sort of way of talking about it, from what I gather, uh, is that they want some sort of socialist revolution, like as Jeremy Corbyn says, a green industrial revolution. Right. Uh, I don't agree with that. You know, the Conservatives have done okay, they've done a good job, but they've not done enough. You know, we've cut CO2 mm-hmm. down, we are leading in the maritime. Uh, transport mm-hmm. in terms of zero carbon emissions we are seeing less and less coal getting used every year that's a record low amounts of coal we're seeing more and more investment i mean what was i think it was two weeks ago we saw our energy production produce more from renewable energies yeah. than it was fossil fuels so we are doing a, a massive lot. bit we yeah. are doing a lot but i think it's that sort of you know some people in our party obviously don't agree with climate change and i think that's what they're trying to say is they're trying to attack those people. I don't think they're trying to attack the Conservatives as a whole. They might do it. They might think that, you know, Jez is the man for them and that's what they want to see. That's their opinion, but I don't agree with that side. I agree that, you know, the Conservatives are probably the best party for dealing with climate change because it's not all just about dealing with climate change. You need to do it affordable. Yeah. As I said, the people go out if it's affordable. The people, governments will only do it if it's affordable. Yeah. I think Philip Hammond, the ex-Chancellor, says it'll cost $2 trillion. To, for the UK to fix its part of climate change. So if you're talking about, okay, maybe we need to do it by 2025, but where are we going to get £2 trillion from? We barely have enough money to afford schools, NHS. Mm-hmm. Where do you think we're going to get £2 trillion from? And that, that, that's the part that I completely disagree with them on. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I admire them. Honestly, I do admire people that go out their way and portray something but I think it's a good cause. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a tricky one. Uh, how do we how do we fix something without completely reshaping the entire way the world mm. works? Um, yeah, it, it always will be. It's puzzled our greatest minds yeah. before, and it always will be a problem that I think will continue. If we do survive the climate breakdown, there'll be other problems, and we will still struggle to this day to come up with solutions to things. And that's just humans. Humans will find a way. But I, I believe in that. Yeah. Right. Um, so in the grand, like the, or maybe we're coming back off uh, the Scottish Youth Parliament. Yeah, yeah, back but, on the Scottish Youth Parliament. Yeah, thing, so, yeah. Um, so can, can you tell me, like, just kind of tell me about what it is uh, in the sense of like the the way it works and, and how people get involved and how they get elected. Okay, so people get uh, elected every two years. So every right. two years there's an election. Mm-hmm. They mostly occur in schools, but... They, they try and encourage every young person to go in. So you can go into your school and you can 
vote for it if there's a wee ballot paper there. But most right. likely, it's all going to be done within schools. Uh, How long has this been running for? Oh, this was actually a good fact. This is the Scottish Parliament's a day older than the actual physical Scottish Parliament. It was Whoa. formed one day before the Scottish Parliament. Uh, so it is older That's than the Scottish good Parliament. Fact. Obviously not as old as Westminster, but it yeah. is older than the Scottish Parliament. So this By has been going day? on since 1999, uh, since I was born. Uh, so it holds every two years. And its goal is to basically say, look, drop politics. Don't go in a party political. You can go on that on your side. I know everyone in that youth parliament today that's elected as a member of a party. Mm-hmm. But they come together and they say, do you know what? Party politics doesn't mean anything. What means anything is the young people that we represent. Because that is who we, we represent anyone from 14 to 25. And that is our constituents. That is right. who we represent. So we go out there and we consult them. What do you want to see? You know, I consulted schools. They wanted to see, what is it, uh, plastic bottles. They wanted to see schools cut down in the amount of plastic bottles, so they suggested right. to do something that my uni does, and that gives like a little sort of ceramic kind of reusable cup right, okay. where they can come uh-huh. in and just use that bottle, buy it once, and then that's them. They yeah. don't need to waste hundreds of bottles of yeah. plastic every day. Uh, you know, it was all the wee tiny things that make a huge and the company difference. does, yeah. and then we discuss it as a parliament. If we think, yeah, that's absolutely right, that's one way we can go, we then go and um, talk that to the councillors talk that to the MSPs. We go and talk to the people that are in power who go on. Because we don't, we don't have any legislative power. We could... We, we are responsible here for young people's views because we feel that young people's views aren't listened to as much from mm-hmm. politicians. And we talk to the politicians in their behalf who are going to listen to us. Well, we hope they're going to listen to us. That's not always the case. Uh, but that is essentially at the core what the Youth Parliament does. And it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it is. absolutely, yeah. How many people are, are sort of involved in <laughs> Uh, well, I know from the last sitting there was about 120 people oh, right. voting there. I would like to say there's about 150, uh, probably max. So there's 150 people. And there's about two in every sort of ward and district. Right. So that would work out to be like 75, 80 different districts across Scotland. So there's people from Orkney all the way to Green. Right. And, Green. It's, and they all come in this one centralised location every, yeah. what is it, every couple of months. I Where mean, is that? It's all over Scotland. So last week, actually, it was last Saturday, we were in Dunfermline Fife. Right. The next one, we're in the Scottish Parliament building, right. actually in the debating mm-hmm. chamber where the MSP sit, and then the next one's up in Orkney. Right, so okay. So it's all over Scotland, yeah. just to try and, you know, get us to see the sights and all that. Kind of but at the same time, you know, we, we are representing Scotland. Yeah. So we want to go up to different places yeah, so that yeah. we can say, look, we are representing you. Here we're here in Orkney, here we're here in Edinburgh, here we're here in Glasgow. Is this sort of thing uh, the same, do they have the same sort of thing in England? Mm. There's a UK youth parliament. It used to be separate and then they decided, well, with the UK, so let's form a UK youth parliament. And that is occasionally, again, that's, I think it's mostly down in England, the UK youth parliament. Right. Because I think the English youth parliament just combined into the UK youth parliament right. and invited Everyone, everyone else. else. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's mostly held in England, but I know for a fact that they also have the House of Commons thing. That's coming up, I think, quite recently. And it's the actual physical... It's, what's amazing about that is it's the chair speaker of the House of Commons. So it used to be John Berko. Uh, I don't know if he'll still do it, but uh, whoever is the chair of the House of Commons chairs the youth parliament when right. they're in the House of Commons. So it is, it's really it's wonderful because it's a yeah. good experience for maybe people that aren't politically oriented or if they are they can get to say down the line that they were in the house of commons and they <laughs> debated and things matter and kind of have that little bragging right over so people. Uh, the people that, that you interact with at the scottish youth parliament are they all from the same uh, obviously there's no uh, political representation necessarily but are they all from the same political uh, par- uh, group or or do you have friends from like all different ones? Well, um, the wonderful thing is, is we don't have that sort of party politics there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've mentioned I'm a Conservative, but I have friends that are in the Youth Parliament that are SNP, that are Labour, that are Liberal Democrat, right. uh, Brexit Party. So it's know. not like uh, your opinions... No, like... well, obviously we have our own opinions, yeah. but because there's not that political, party political thing, we put them to our side yeah. and we say, right, is this going to help them? Uh and that's what I think is a probably makes me sort of a bit different from a lot of people. When you're going into party politics, you don't vote with Labour if you're Conservative. You just don't. You don't vote with Liberal Democrat if you're Labour. 
etc etc whereas this you don't have that yeah so you vote in generally what one your constituents believe and two what you believe and ultimately it goes very very well i mean i managed to put forward a motion on mortgage interest relief a very conservative policy nonetheless but it only failed by one vote i can almost rest assured if that was part of political it fell by about 30 40 so what was that you were talking about there uh, so the motion that i had fell by one vote and that was mortgage interest relief so it basically said that you know in a mortgage you have like the capital of the building which mm-hmm. is the actual value of the house and then they'll add interest onto that yep. to do that so my idea was that to help young people especially first-time buyers was that the government either gave tax relief to the people that went and bought these mortgages so that they could pay the interest rates and in effect actually get their mortgage cheaper. That's essentially what it was meant to be. Or they provide a subsidy and they pay the interest rates so that they only need to pay the capital. And that was only available right. for first-time buyers. We have something very similar, uh, help to buy it's called, and that's already a government scheme and that helps with the deposit. So what they do is is they ask people to save up money every month. It can be a pound every month or it can be £200. And every month you're meant to save up so much money and then when you're ready to put a deposit down for the house, depending on how much money they've saved, they can come in with up to £3,000 and say, here you go, put that in the house. Right, okay. So it was to work alongside that. But it fell by one third. And that's the beauty of the youth parliament. You know, uh, I know for a fact that if that was maybe part of political, it might not even been allowed to put forward because yeah. that is quite a conservative principle. Uh, but not, And it probably would have fell by 60 because those conservatives are not very popular amongst the youth it's more SNP Labour Liberal Democrats yeah. so it would have fell by quite a bit and that is the beauty of things we can get stuff done and it's actually in times of this sort of chaos in Westminster can look on us and how we deal things we don't deal in a disrespectful manner you know this is, I don't know if you've seen clips of the language that's been used yeah. in Parliament and all that. we don't use that kind of stuff we don't let party politics influence what we believe is good for that so maybe the, we always say that the governments could look at us and uh, take us as a bit of inspiration well do yeah properly. it seems like the way you're describing it is that there's a lot more maturity in the Scottish Youth Parliament than there is in Parliament mm. well that's that's how we interpret it the Parliament mm. might decide otherwise I wouldn't possibly say that that is exactly how it is but that's the way that we as a yeah. collective body try and we did a nice wee BBC video on that I think it was down in the English well I say the English British uh, Youth Parliament did a wee video on that explaining that so I'm just quoting from yeah. That, so. Um. But also, like that sort of like, uh, no, you don't have a political party that you're representing when you speak on one specific subject. Oh. That's something that I think a lot of people can can relate to because, as you were saying, people might hear something and think that they automatically hate it just because one specific political party's mm. yeah. uh, member is saying it. Um. So yeah, I, I think that maybe, like something like that could be implemented in the parliament and that also or something uh, like even like a news outlet that like portrays this information but completely unbiasedly and doesn't inform the reader of like what party it's coming from that might help the youth get involved in politics yeah definitely um i think you know it's wonderful to see because we're all big environmentalists we chose the environment as our campaign our our focus for the year was to push for our like change in the way that we're dealing with the environment and to see people from all different political parties outside of the youth parliament uh, from SNP for Labour to Conservative we were all pitching these ideas for change and every single one of us backed it every single yeah. one of us were like no we will do this and that is the beauty of things is when there's a huge crisis like there is now we yeah. all got together yeah. and we are trying to get the politicians to change it again whether or not they do what we say that we think's best is completely up to them. That's up to them to decide. They're the decision makers, but we we can definitely go out there and try and change the world, essentially. And yeah. it's the youth that can 100% do that. So um, is this something you want to go like forward and continue doing? Do you want to get more involved in politics? I don't know, because politics is politics. Uh, <laughs> so that's the simplest saying ever. Uh, you can one minute be in your high horse, top of the world and then the next minute a story can come out that can completely sabotage your career you'll never ever be able to get back in politics uh, the people that got me into politics were Ruth Davidson, Ken Clark Dominic Grieve, Rory Stewart all conservatives but they were that sort of one nation liberal conservatives and they're all now getting pushed out they've all quit, they're not standing down and that's their political career is over 
Um, so in terms of a job, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I have the ability to do such a thing. Uh, I think that, you know, uh, when you try and get into these things, you need to have this sort of mentality to do it, and I'm just not got that mentality. Uh, what I don't want to do is, you've always heard of corrupt politicians mm-hmm. that they'll do it for businesses, they'll do it for that. I do not want to see myself become that. Right. And there is a risk when you're in politics. There's not every politician is corrupt to the bone. Not everyone is even remotely corrupt. Yeah. But there is that chance. Yeah. And I would be so ashamed of myself if I looked back on my career if I did get that and I became this sort of corrupt politician that's only in it for himself and his friends. Yeah, uh, doing it for personal gain rather than yeah, exactly. the greater good of yeah. people. Because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying yeah. to get people to go out and vote Conservative to vote uh, in this way because that's how I believe is what's best for the country. And right now I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm corrupt in any way. I wouldn't say that I'm influenced any. I'm just so yeah. passionate about something and that's where I want to stay to. So I'm happy to be an activist. If there's a door open, I might look at it in a different perspective and mm-hmm. I might think, okay, let's go for it because it's an open door. Uh, I'm not one to really close door opportunities. So you're not actively going out your way to get involved on no, in that sort of level? No, not really. If something came up, you if would something came up, uh, If something came up and I believed it was the right thing to do at the right time, I might reconsider my stance but right now I'm more than happy to stay where I am because I get to criticise everything without so, that sort of pressure what kind of thing do you want to end up in doing in life what is your well I want to be a teacher right. I want to be a computer science teacher that's what I'm studying at uni and right now that's my focus on where I'm going to be right uh, I love working with young people they're so enthusiastic they're so determined they're so so many ideas and to work with them and to help shape their vision and to make it a reality mm-hmm. is just brilliant because these yeah. are the next generation people. I want to see that the next generation better than my generation and better before the generation. Every generation should be an improvement, not a regression. Yeah. And to work as a teacher to get that sort of progression, the positive progression, that to me is enough to do that. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so right now what is it yeah, you kind of want to do in terms of getting the youth involved and do you think that obviously I think we you, your point was that you want more people involved in politics, you want more youth involved in politics but uh, in the sort of grand scheme of things how do you do that, how do you actually implement that well you have to look at two things, you have to look at one why they don't go out in the first place and then two you need to look at how can you get them out to go and vote, so if we look at why they don't go out and vote for the first place. There's several different factors. One, they can't be bothered, which is fair enough. Uh, a lot of people just don't care about politicians. They don't care about politics because at the end of the day, unless something really catastrophically goes wrong with politics, their life isn't going to be changed yeah. that drastically by one vote. So they just don't see the point. Uh, two, it could be the distrust in politicians. More and more recently, we're seeing this sort of anger, this hatred, this distrust. We're calling people traitors because they want to remain in the European Union or, you know, they want Jeremy Corbyn in power. Mm. Uh, these are people's views, these are people's views, and we're calling them traitors. So there's that sort of anger, and people just don't want to bother with that. And I know a lot of people, potentially, specifically in my work, that do not care for any politician. Yeah. That he sees them as all the same. They're a politician, I call them a politician, so therefore I don't like them. And that's completely fair. And then you need to look at why they do that. That's as an example. That's Brexit is an exact example why people just won't go out and vote because they're sitting there just debating the same things over and over and over again. They won't give people just a yes or no answer. You know, if people want to say, uh, you know, will Britain be off poorer uh, if we leave the European Union? A politician's answer could be, well, you need to look at it in several different factors, X, Y, and Z, mm-hmm. when they just want a yes or no yeah, so that they can make up their mind. Because a lot of people aren't politically acknowledged. Mm-hmm. So you go and ramble on to them and particularly most likely avoid the answer by going into something completely different yeah they just don't like that yeah and then you look at how do you get them to vote and to get them to vote is quite simple you have something go wrong and that is in my opinion brexit brexit was wrong uh, i don't believe that we should be leaving the european union i believe that we should be remaining as a member of the european union and potentially even integrating further 
and I'm encouraging people to go out and vote because we didn't people didn't go out and vote last time and yeah. this is what happened look and at what the queers what led to, yeah. so we need to learn from our mistakes they always let say learn from your predecessors our predecessors decided well predecessors would be like people of the past so mm-hmm. the past people in 2016 didn't go out the youth didn't go out yes it was the biggest turnout in British history I accept that but the youth still didn't go out as much as they should have adults in particular as well should have went out and if everyone went out and voted Okay, your single vote might not matter, but think about thousands and hundreds of thousands yeah. of people that will think the same as you. Yeah. All of a sudden, that's become potentially a seat, potentially a different party, yeah. potentially different party politics, potentially different fundamental ideology of a country. Just those hundred thousand. In Lanark and Hamilton East, my constituency, the Conservatives lost out by a hundred odd votes. Right. And the SNP came in. Right. So if there was a hundred people that were going to vote Conservative and just said, ah, which is solid. a very small number, can, in the grand scheme you can of change it. You can yeah. change. Lanark and Hamilton East could change from this sort of SNP territory to a strong, business friendly, environmentally friendly, whatever you want. It could turn into anything mm-hmm. that you want if you went and done that way. Yeah. Same with Labour. Labour were okay. They came third. Uh, I'm sure they came third anyway. But they were slightly. They, they were like 130, 140 votes. They were not far off mm-hmm. from us and not far off the SNP. So if people that voted Labour sat and said, ah, I'm not going to make a difference. They could have changed. Lanark and Hamilton needs to be this sort of party that's represented by separatists to this party that wants uh, socialism, that wants this union, but at the same time that the social... It, 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 honestly, it is amazing. It is really, really important, especially with this upcoming general election. I don't see it if... I don't see... If people don't go out and vote nothing's going to change with Brexit. Yeah. We will either go to this no-deal catastrophic cliff edge uh, or we can go out and vote. And if you despise Brexit, I will still vote Conservative. I always will because Brexit's the only thing that's... I disagree with the party. I believe in a lot of other things. The Conservative. So I'm going to vote Conservative with the belief that I'm not the only Conservative that mm-hmm. wants to remain in the European Union. There's councillors, there's MPs. They'll do the work for me. But if you do not trust the Conservatives and you don't agree with the Conservatives, I absolutely urge you, go out, vote for a party if you believe yeah. strongly in the EU. It's the only way you'll ever stop it now. This yeah. is your last opportunity. You don't have another for 40 years, 50 years. You might not ever have one in your lifetime. Yeah. So this is really your important moment. And if there's nothing that's going to get you out there, fine. Fine with that. But please. Give go out and yeah. vote for goodness sake. Yeah, so. Get us out of this mess and <laughs> so that I can move on and not have to worry about the European Union. Please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I can get where you're coming from. So it's almost like if you're not going to vote at all, at least have a good reason to not mm. vote. Yeah. Um, do you think more people have got involved because of Brexit? Yeah, definitely. Well, I've, I mainly got involved because of Brexit. Mm. I, I know a lot of young people have went from not caring about politics to go and to maybe join Extinction Rebellion or Greenpeace. Right. You know, they're okay, they're not a political party, but they're a political pressure group. Yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden they've went from not caring about politics at all to really, they're really determined on one subject. Yeah. Okay, they might not really care about transport, uh, dogs, cats, whatever, houses, but really care about the environment. You can still go out and join a political pressure group if you are really passionate. So if you're really passionate about the EU, you can go join a um, uh, People's Vote. Yeah. And that's not a political party. Its main focus is to get another referendum. Yep. And if you're passionate about that, absolutely go and do it. So there's loads of other things that you can do in the world of politics that isn't party political. Loads of things. So for those listening right now, what would you suggest they do to get more involved in politics? <sighs> well, if, if look at what you've got uh, and what you're really passionate in. If you're passionate and remember a member of the European Union, you really, really believe that leave was not the best way to go. Remain is always the way to go. You want to see a United States of Europe. You want to be controlled by this thing. Then you go and find a political pressure group that wants that because you won't be alone. There's billions of humans on this planet. You will not be alone in thinking that. So even if you only find one person, that's still that's still one person that you can go out in the streets with. Okay, you might look a bit silly because there's only two of you, but look at Extinction Rebellion. It never started off with the people that it's got today. Yep. It started off very small. Yep. Greta Thunberg started off yeah. individually. Absolutely. And she is really an inspiration to young people and people across this planet because she started off individually. Now, she sailed across the world in an environmentally friendly manner 
to talk to the UN climate discussion, to talk to the world about this thing. And yeah. she was only passionate in that one thing. So if she can do it, if Extinction Rebellion can do it, if Greenpeace can do it, if the Young Conservatives can do it, if um, Momentum from Labour can do it, you can do it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with like access to things like the internet now. Hmm. It's so easy to find people that believe in what you believe in. And I think that's also another reason why politics is a bit broken at the moment. Is because back in the old days, politicians could lie. They could, you know, skew a fact over mm. or misrepresent a fact, and, and it either was hard to prove and it wrong. was because you couldn't instantly do it. Now, right. if you're in question time, and politician says, "Oh, you're not, we need to leave the European Union because there's too many immigrants coming in," someone could just go, "Well, that's actually not quite true because yeah, that's because that, that's that, that, but yeah. immigrant, but Christianity is still like the biggest yeah. religion, the second biggest with atheism, yeah, As, Islam or." Sikh or yeah. Jewish, they're nowhere near. So, and uh, according to this, there's only X amount of immigrants. Yeah. You said there's that. And then the politicians start going, oh, well, blah, 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 yeah. and they can't work it out. So they've got a problem mm-hmm. with this information. So this sort of next generation will need to solve that. And if they can find a way, you know, I, I, my member's motion was done through a bit of days of research. And that was a member's motion. I came, well, I didn't come up with that day. That was a idea from previous times that I sort of took the good bits and tried to improve it a wee bit yeah. and that was through my own research so if you, I can do that and I'm not got a degree in politics I've not got a I never even took modern studies yeah never even took modern I've not even got a national theory in modern studies and but I you can just find believed that in something but I believed in something and I, I went out of my way you can do it as well with the power of the internet is honestly it's amazing yeah. the internet is probably the best thing humanity might ever invent yeah uh, maybe apart from light speed technology but that's nowhere near uh, at the moment yeah. so, right so we're just going to have to do with the internet mm. <laughs> um, yeah so I mean I'm quite content with what I've just heard that's pretty amazing mm. is there anything you'd like to talk about uh, the only thing that I would question you is since we're talking about the voter thing is why is it that you don't go out and if you're wanting to talk about that why not is it that absolutely. you uh, great, great why question. do you not find a political party or political group that you can go so I wish I kind of had like a shorter answer for this Um, but I think uh, I think I'm I'm just too I don't know how to properly like word this but um, I find it hard to be set in a specific way Um, and uh, so let me think about this for a second so I can maybe word it better. I apologise if I put you in this no, 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 you no, did this ask is, the question. This is, good, so. this is good, this is good. No, this is a great, great question. I like it. Um, so I feel like when you vote for a party, you're voting for the, the entire beliefs of that party, mm. which first of all is a struggle for anyone. Mm. Um, but then uh, I, I sort of see the world that it's a, a, there's so many inconsistencies, there's so many problems, there's so many like... So if I vote for this party or that party or any other party, generally my life won't change that much. That's the way I sort of look at it. Regardless of what happens, I'm quite content. I think uh, for a better world, uh, for a better uh, country, we need a better world. Mm. I think that there needs to be a like a rescaling of everything mm. from the ground up. Um, but I don't know what that means, and I don't have any answers. Um, but I, I would find it hard to go, yeah, I can agree with this one enough to go and vote for them, you know? Mm. Um, oh, so, you, so you do go out and vote, but you just don't? I do not go out and vote. You no. don't go out and vote. I, right, I, okay. I've never been out and voted. I've, I've never even feel felt that sort of morally obligated to vote. Mm. And maybe that's because I've, uh, education, I've not been educated in the sense that my vote matters. Um, I don't know. Um, so I went to uh, Moldova about mm. a month yeah, ago. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, so that that so Moldova was initially owned by Russia, mm. um, and it was a, a communist state under the under USSR, mm. um, and we we're sort of fed that through most outlets that communism was a bad thing. Mm. And don't get me wrong, I think in the grand scheme of things, uh, the way that Russia treated that was that it was a bad it was a bad thing. They did bad things and. It's generally just associated with like a bad mentality. But to speak with people that were actually from Transnistria and grew up there or Moldova, um, the older generation loved communism because it gave them a purpose. They, they knew kind of like what they had to do and how to benefit from, from like uh, society. 
Um, they were a completely self-sufficient country and actually are still quite self-sufficient. Um, and those are things that are pretty amazing, like a country that can completely rely on just itself. That's impressive. But they, we couldn't really have that because we rely on so many things out with our country or out with like materials and stuff sourced outside what we have that we couldn't really do that. But the difference with what we have and what they have is that what they have is a general uh, good well-being. They don't rely on the internet. They don't rely on high, like high-end technology. They're just content. They like it the way it is. And, and they, they just it. have a simple life. So, I mean, I, I brought that up to kind of say like, how could we set up a system where we're just more people are just happy with the way it is um but in the same sense should we settle for a, a, like lowering our standards and being happy with us or should we raise the bar and want something more from our government mm. and that's where i kind of like I struggle to find uh the the meaning behind voting is it that we're being greedy and want more from our government or are we relying on our government to make us happy or should we just do it the way we want to do it and let them sort of like just sort of guide their lives? So I, I, that's where I'm stuck. I find it too complicated. And, and once you jump into one thing, yeah, it leads it, to a million other yeah, things. Yeah, and that's, that is the unfortunate tale of party politics is you will find someone say, actually, that's, that's a pretty good idea. That's a sweet yeah. idea. But then you'll look over the page and there'll be something completely disagreeing yeah. about you and you'll be exactly. like, ah. I can't go and vote for that because they will yeah. go and do that if I vote them in. And that is just unfortunately the way the political system works. Um, I don't see that ever changing. The only way that I would ever see it changing is if we all decide scrap political parties just all run as independents. Yeah. Because then, okay, you'll have a manifesto, but you can kind of change it to suit everyone else. But yeah. that's, that's never going to happen because nothing will really get done if you ever tried to have 650 people in a room <laughs> saying, okay, what what should the taxes be? Yeah. I believe 1%. You are <laughs> yeah. That is how it would go down. But no, that is a very valid point. I would still urge you to go out and vote. But Absolutely, yeah. No, uh, if you are not going to be convinced, then I'm not going to be the one. Oh, no, vote. I think I could be convinced. <laughs> I, I could be easily convinced. Don't get me wrong. Well, then, uh, I, you should go out and vote for the Conservative Party. We are the best party for scotland and the uk <laughs> i think maybe like um so like the way that voting set is set up is completely fine don't get me wrong but why does it sort of need to be necessarily linked to uh not just one belief but the entire manifesto you know um it'd be good if we could take independent individual subject matter to parliament and collectively as a nation vote towards one act at a time mm -hmm. and then maybe that's how we could help yeah, that, redefine that, that the way would we look require at the world. as you said a whole world it would, it would change be democracy impossible. would need to, it, it would be, be completely be, impossible because there'd be people that want to keep it the same yeah and people saying less is good Which, and you'd have to fight against them and that's yeah. that again that is the wonder wonderful ability of human beings is we're all different we all think differently we all act differently and you know, when we're we're talking about for world change, yeah, okay, in an ideal world we can do that, but human beings are beautiful, it's they're not, wonderful yeah, things. It's not an ideal world. They're not they're it's not just going the way to give is. up they're, they're that admin and yeah. completely respect humans for that. Yeah, and that's what makes it great, really. Yeah. It's that there's so much individuality and everything so uh, unpredictable and people can can control things and let things flow and the world just constantly evolves. Um, yeah, it is. It's an interesting. It's an interesting topic, mm. but also a very confusing one. Yeah, it is. It's really confusing, <laughs> especially in now times. <sighs> so, what's uh, next for you? What's the next big step, sto stepping stone in life? I don't even know anymore. Don't know. Um, Staying at the Scottish Youth Parliament. <sighs> getting in that. I don't. I think I'll be standing down at the end of my term. Uh, the local elections are coming up. I might look at the local elections, get into a councillor job. Uh, I might decide, no, MSYP's good for another two years. I might decide, do you know what? I've been through enough of politics. It's time for me to put it to a side and hang up the boots, as they say, and just not go in. I honestly do not know. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and it'll be 
interesting to see where I am in the next 10, 15 years. So to bring this to a close is uh, for those that are, the youth that are uh, sort of politically involved, how do they get involved in the Scottish Youth Parliament? How do they get involved in Scottish yeah. Youth Parliament? Well, for starters, you can email your local MSYP. You go onto the SYP website, find your MSYP. You can either type in your address, your constituency, or like your postcode or whatever you wanted, mm-hmm. and you'll find the two people that represent you. Right. You can then send them a wee email, and you know you can give them either your beliefs. You know, I want you to push this for me. You know, I really think this is that. Or you can follow them on Twitter or Facebook or whatever they have. And most likely they'll keep you up to date with surveys. I've tried to keep people up to date with saying, okay, how do you want me to vote in all these motions? Do you want me to vote yes for invisible disabilities? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to vote no for invisible disabilities? You can get involved that way. But if you really think, no, actually, that's not enough for me. I want to actually be a representative of these people because I have so many beliefs. I'm a good public speaker. I'm imaginative ideas etc etc then there'll be a support worker coming around coming up the election times and he'll be wanting names you can go on the website and i'm sure you can apply through there and you might be running up against me to which i'll wish you all the luck and all the best uh i will obviously if i'm trying to become an msyp again i will be campaigning against you <laughs> and you will need to beat me but no uh, you can get involved in loads of ways you can get involved as just a simple constituent that wants his views heard or you can get yeah. even further involved and become the board Brilliant. board members if you really wanted to do it your world your oyster i'm sure there's some people out there that are like yeah i, I want to do that yeah and you have helped them i hope i have do you have any closing words uh make sure you go out and vote in the december election i don't care who you vote for don't care if you vote conservative i would urge you to vote conservative but I don't care if you do, vote Labour, SNP, whatever, just go out and vote. Your voice really, really in these crucial, crucial times matters. Even if this is your only time you vote, do it. Right. This is your chance to change. Thanks for coming on. And it's made my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for watching the podcast. Next episode will be out this Wednesday. And again, thanks very much. <laughs>